Now, Ask Dr. Love with psychotherapist, author, love and relationship expert, Jamie Turndorf, Ph.D. Hello again and welcome to Ask Dr. Love Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf and it's my pleasure to be with you for the show which I'm calling Three Secrets to Cracking the Man Code. And I have a guest with me today, Matt Boggs, who's dedicated his life to increasing love in the world one heart at a time. I love that. Matt has co-authored the best-selling book Project Everlasting, Two Bachelors, Discover the Secrets of America's Greatest Marriages. And in this show we're going to be talking about lots of things. I'll let let us get to it. Uh, by the way, Matt's appeared on dozens of national media, including the Today Show and CNN Headline News and Fox News and CB- CNN Showbiz Tonight and ABC Family, the Style Network and many others. And he even contributed to an international peace symposium with His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So without further ado, let me introduce you to Matt Bo- Boggs. Are you there, Matt? I am, Dr. Jamie. How are you? How are you? I thought that you had fallen in there for a moment. I know. It took me just a a bit to get dialed in, but I am grateful to be here and excited about uh, being with you today. Me too. So talk to me about, well, what got you into this? Before we get into cracking the man code, what got you into doing what you do? Well, you know, I think like, like, well, I don't know if I'm like many men, but I had the interest from a long time to find the one. You know, I was one of those hopeless romantics. I wanted to find uh, my life partner, get married, and no matter what I did in my my 20s, I found myself single and frustrated. I was always going after either a woman who didn't like me or I was attracting women that I didn't like. And uh, and that was really frustrating. And it, and it came to a head at a personal development seminar. My mom said, why don't you go and, and learn about yourself and why don't you go grow? Because obviously what you're doing is not working in love and relationships. And I went to this personal development seminar and they did a game. And there were 50 men and 50 women. And the game was that all the men would sit in a line and get voted on by the woman, by women, and they would simply go down the line and say yes or no of whether or not they were wanted to be on an island with this guy based on his beingness, not based on attractiveness, but just based on who they've seen over the past week. If this was the last guy to choose from, do you want to be on an island with him? And our job as men was just to tally yes or no. And so these women went down the line and they were vote, you know, they would tell us yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, all the way down the line. And so here I am, and we're, our job is just to tally up the number of yeses and number of noes. And then at the end of the voting, the facilitator said, all right, gentlemen, we want you to stand up and get an order of the guy who has the most yeses down to the guy who has the most noes. And so we all found our positions, and when the dust settled, I looked down the line, and I was second to last with the most no's. Whoa. And, that's, <laughs> that's an ego blow, dude. Ego <laughs> blow. I was like, wow, I would never. And the guy next to me who was last was a total jerk. Nobody liked this guy. Like, And I'm standing next to him, so I'm like, okay, then where does that put me? And, and you know what? You know, You're not ugly. I've seen your picture. You're handsome. So it's thank not you. what. And I thought I was charming and fun, and you know, I had all these perceptions of myself. And I think in life, and this is a key point, who we per- perceive ourselves to be and how we're showing up isn't always what others perceive us to be. And it's so important to have people who are willing to reflect back to you. You know, Ken Blanchard says, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Right. And on that, on that particular day, it was a wake-up call for me because I had been confused of why I was single for four years. I thought I had been doing it right. I thought I was showing up in a way that was the optimal way for me to be in a relationship. So the facilitator was great. She goes, is there any guy here who's surprised by where he's standing? And full on embarrassed, I raised my hand and people laughed, you know, and, and, uh, and they said, all right, well, ladies, is there any woman who's willing and has the courage to give Matt the gift of feedback? And all these hands shot up in the room. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. And one by one, they started to tell me, you know, why they voted no. And, and the central theme that came through what it is they said, was that at some point throughout that week, they had felt judged by me. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, and although that wasn't who I was, that wasn't who I perceived myself to be as a judgmental person, I thought I would be, you know, I'm a very accepting person. There was the element of truth in their words that just struck right to my core. Well, were you actually judging them or was it just how your body lang- – you know, sometimes when a person is insecure, you'll put out body language that can be misread as superior or aloof when, in fact, you're uncomfortable or you're feeling shy. Was that what was going on, Matt? I think it was, I think it was a combination of some of that mixed with judgment, you know, mixed yeah. with why mm-hmm. – and, and really going on a, on a journey of, you know, why was I – putting out the vibe of being judgmental. And what it came down to, I was so critical of myself. I was so hard of on myself that that same judgment is the, is the vibe that I was putting out to other people. That and, is so true. Yep. And mm-hmm. at the end of the day, so I, I went on a journey after that. I came, I came back, moved back home, started hanging out with my grandparents, and they had this unbelievable, amazing, connected, you know, rich relationship. And I wanted to find out how they created that, and I wanted that for myself, and I wanted to find out what the patterns were that generated lifelong love. And so that's what sent us on a journey. I I, uh, hopped in an RV with my grandmother and my best friend. We drove 12,000 miles around the country seeking out America's greatest marriages. Couples have been together over 40 years because we wanted to know their secrets for how they created these amazing love stories. And the coolest part about this, see, I grew up in a family where my parents divorced, all my aunts and uncles were divorced, and so I never really got to see modeled before me what it took to make it last. And so to see this from America's Greatest Marriages, and that's ultimately what we wrote in Project Everlasting, were their answers to our most burning questions about how do you create this kind of relationship, it empowered me to see a new model, a new way of doing love. And sure enough, by switching a few things, by understanding what creates attraction, by understanding what builds connection, um, the very last stop on the book tour, I ended up meeting a woman and approaching her and building connection and building attraction. And four years later to the to the day we met, we got married, and now we've been married for just over two years and, and, uh, and building our everlasting love story. It's a lovely, lovely story. Now, you know, the, the thing that's implied in what you said, because you had said a moment ago that you were judgmental of yourself, which then therefore extends out to others. If you're judgmental of yourself, you're judgmental of others. So actually, we have to really cultivate self-love and not be judgmental of ourselves before we can have an everlasting love. So I'm sure you fixed that, you know, the way you talk to yourself. Absolutely. That was that was where it really starts, is being right. a soft place. And this is what these couples reflected, too, is that having a beautiful relationship with yourself where you Absolutely. are fully activated, we're living a life that we love, we're accepting, we're loving, that that then you can – it's like putting on your own uh, – uh, air mask in the air in the airplane. They say, put yours on first, and then assist someone next to you, or assist your child. And that's yes. really the same is true in love. You know, if that we're is not, so true. yeah, if we're not healthy inside and with ourselves first, and I needed so that was part that was the starting place for me is really learning um, self acceptance. Because I'm a, you know, I'm, I'm a goofball and I make mistakes and my, my wife laughs at, you know, all the things that, that, you know, the ways I'll screw up or forget. Just the other night, she, we we're going to her parents' house and she called me right before I was leaving and said, hey, babe, will you bring me my boots? And they're up, you know, they're in the closet and they're here, these black boots. I want to wear them to my mom's house. And I said, sure. And she then asked for a couple other things. And, uh, so I'm getting everything ready and I bolt out the door and I go and I pick her up and she says, Hey, did you grab my boots? <laughs> and I was like, Oh my gosh, I forgot your boots. Like I grabbed the other things and the, the boots were sitting right by the door and I just ran out without them. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of, that's one of my quirks is, is I'll get so wrapped up in what I'm doing that I'll forget other things at times. And it can be very frustrating. It can be frustrating to be married to a guy, a guy yeah, like but that. But you know what's you know? very charming about you? What's so appealing is your humility. Because, you know, I'll never forget when, when I would get mad at my husband, you know, and he would say to me in this adorable French accent, But Jamie, I'm doing all what I can. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, oh, it's love, so God, appealing. Or, or then he would say to me, but don't you know, Jamie, I'm very effed up. He, I can't say the word. I can't say the word. Yeah. <laughs> but just, just being, you know, humble about admitting we're human. We're effed up. We're, but this is, it's to even admit our foibles in a self-loving way is so charming. And I really admire you for this, Matt, because so many men and women will not have the, uh, you know, the strength. They don't have the strength to say, yes, I made a mistake. Yes, this is an inadequacy of mine. So I like this about you. And this is what makes you a good partner. It's really well, and I, fig- I figured out. For me, the connection for me was, you know, uh, I, there's a there's a great um, epidemic in our society, and the epidemic is loneliness. It's disconnection. Even though we have all these ways to connect with with Facebook and with Twitter and all these and social media, and, and we're more connected technologically today not, than ever before. Not. Can, <laughs> yeah, it can not. lead to this. Exactly, there's this feeling of disconnection, and for me. Uh, there was such a fear of, you know, if I showed a, a, right. a fault or a downfall, this was in my early 20s, if I showed that, if I revealed that, 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 that people wouldn't like me. And I had it's a look. It's the opposite. I, it's the opposite, right? right? The it, more you come in with vulnerability and admitting your flaws and your foibles, it is so endearing because what you're doing is you're saying, I'm not better than you. I'm not looking down my nose at you. And then the other person is comfortable to admit, yeah, well, I'm pretty effed up too. <laughs> we're, <laughs> exactly. All, exactly. we're all, we're all, we're all works in progress. We're all limping through, you know. Exactly, exactly. But it's so appealing. It's I, you know, this is what when I heard you on the the interview that you were doing, I just said I have to have this guy on my show because you really are a model for the way we want men to be, to be vulnerable, to not be. You know, the John Wayne macho hardened veneer. This is a horrendous prison for men, and it really prevents you from forming a loving relationship. Well, I appreciate that. And I've had, I've had outstanding role models in my life. Uh, my dad's a marriage therapist and counselor, and, you know, he was the one who really showed me that, you know, true connection comes from that vulnerability and being able to show your emotions, and that actually is, mm-hmm. comes from a place of strength, not mm-hmm. weakness, to be Absolutely. able to show how you feel about things and that it, that's okay for men to do. Oh, I agree, and I think that it's wonderful that you do it, and I'm sure your wife just says, this guy is a keeper. <laughs> he's a, he's a well, I, keeper. Even though he forgets my shoes, even though I may have fallen arches, you know, I get no foot support from this man, but he gives me emotional yeah. connection and emotional support. Right? Exactly. That's hilarious. No yeah. arch support that day. Some emotional support. I got support. no, I got arch, no support. arch support, but I got heart support. I'm going to take a brief break, and I'll be back with you in a moment on Ask Dr. Love Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf, and it's my pleasure to be with you today. I'm with Matt Boggs, true difference maker. He wrote the best-selling book, Project Everlasting, Two Bachelors Discover Discover the Secrets of America's Greatest Marriages. And, Matt, this is the segment in my show that I call Dr. Love's Quickie, and I guess you can imagine why I call it the Quickie, because it's my short segment. And I always... (laughs) I always do a few little tweets to help people remember the principles, you know, that we're talking about in the show. So let me lay a few tweets on you and I'll do it fast because this is my quickie segment. So, so if a guy sees intimacy as a noose, you're better off cutting him loose. That's one. (laughs) And that's a true one. Um, The trick to a relationship quick start is to relate with an open heart. Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yep, and the next one is the best way to erase him is to chase him. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't, that the, Ain't that the truth? <laughs> and last but not least, be real in his heart you will steal. All right, so I whip those out fast. We can go back to being serious now, <laughs> but I can't be serious. I love that. And quickie, quickies are important, you know. That, this is yeah. A very important segment. 
you know, and it helps you from getting a callus, you know, from one. No, no, that's a whole nother story. So <laughs> let's talk about amplifying attraction triggers. I like that expression. So you're, you're talking in your book on the three secrets to cracking the man code that there's a way to amplify your attraction triggers so that the man you want will approach you. So can you say a little bit about that quickly? Yeah, quickly and absolutely. <laughs> What was a major shift for me is understanding what built attraction. I was actually operating from a framework in a relationship from the feminine position. The person who coached me in relationships and how to get women was my older sister. So she was giving me everything that was working for her in love and relationships, which she you know, went on a lot of dates, had a lot of success in love, got married at 21 to her, her soulmate. They've got three kids, amazing marriage. But she approached it from a feminine position, which is what I took on. So I would attract these very strong masculine women that eventually the attraction would fizzle out, and the women I liked did like me. And so uh, understanding how men are wired up, that we actually get a biochemical charge, a biochemical boost when we know that we have provided for you, that we're delivering something for you that is supporting and igniting your happiness. One of the things that we love the most is to give you an experience, to give you something that validates who we are as men. If we can help you feel happy as a woman, it increases our sense of worth as a man. All Absolutely. these marriage masters, yeah, all these marriage masters we talked to said, hey, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Happy and, wife, happy life, right? That's right. And where does that come from? That, those are sayings that come from years of experience that if, if mama's got a big frown on her face in the house, then our entire world is clouded and stormy. Right. right. Because it, it, and it strikes really, you know, for hundreds of thousands of years, our worth, our value of, uh, as men has been hard coded into us as our ability to provide and protect. The better job we do at that, the more value we have as a man. Really, this is hardwired into men. It's part of the male gender role. Doesn't matter what culture you're in, it's in the male role. I am a protector and I am a provider. Absolutely. And it struck me, I'll just give you one clear distinction. And so women, when you're saying, what can you do to increase the attraction trigger, knowing this about your man and knowing that when you joyfully receive from him, oftentimes the mistake is you think men will get triggered when you give things to him. We do, but to an even greater degree, if you receive from us, and you get in your joy, you recognize us, you celebrate us in that receiving. That is a huge attraction boost to us. The thank yous, the kisses, the smiles, the hugs. When we do little things for you, if you celebrate that, that is a huge attraction boost for us. Absolutely. And, Absolutely right. Yeah. And a quick, quick example of, you know, when I started to date my wife versus other women that I was dating, these powerful women that wouldn't, you know, they would want to, they would want to own their own power. And so they would want to take me out or they would want to pay for things or they, they wouldn't want to accept any support or help because I think they wanted me to recognize that they could do it for themselves, which is fine, but they're missing a, a key opportunity to build attraction. So I remember this one woman I went to go pick her up and take her to the airport, and I said, uh, hey, do you need some help with your bags? And she's like, no, 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 I've got it. And she grabs her <laughs> bags and marches down the hallway, and I'm walking behind her empty-handed going, okay, and take her to the airport. And that was just one thing after another like her. When I started dating my wife, we went out to dinner. Southern California, it's not too cold, but as we came, she was doing a little tank top. As we came out at the end of dinner, I saw her skin get goosebumps. And, uh, you know, and so I took my jacket off. I'm like, oh, would you like my jacket? And she looked at me and she said, oh, thank you so much. And she put my jacket on. And, you know, was I cold? You know, yeah, I was a little bit cold, but I, I will brave this cold weather. If my That's your warm. job as a man. My job, you know. And it's, you have to and provide provide warmth, the home fire. Right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Remember and, cavemen. You know, Ooh, fire, fire. And it may sound small, but it is a not. big deal to us. It's everything. 
Men are hardwired to be protectors and providers. And when a woman acknowledges a man for doing what he has been wired to do, he feels that his purpose, purpose in life has been met. Now, I have to take a break. I'll be back with you in a moment on Ask Dr. Love Radio. Hello again, do, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Love Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndorf. I'm talking about three secrets to cracking the man code with my guest, Matt Boggs. He's uh, author of Project Everlasting, a best-selling author, been on all the top networks. He's a life success consultant. He's a really great guy. I'm so glad to have him, and he's really humble, too. Makes lots of mistakes and admits it. He's my kind of man. So, Matt, before... <laughs> Before we took a break, Matt, we were t- Matt, we were talking about attraction triggers. You know, we were talking about how men are hardwired to be the protectors and the providers. You know, it's interesting because in my book, To Death Do Us Part Unless I Kill You First, I have a whole chapter on this where I explain that this is what men do and that women are hardwired to be protected. Now, and a lot of women will say, well, that's ridiculous. You know, that was back in the day. Now we don't need it. Now we uh, earn what men earn. We don't need to be protected and provided for. It's not true because the research shows that women, even when they earn a lot of money, they still choose men who earn more. It's just a natural built-in biological drive to be safe, to be protected. And we want to know that the guy is with us for the long haul. He's not going to abandon us and our offspring. This is just built in and that men are wired to make a woman feel safe and protected. And where relationships go so south is women make this terrible mistake all the time where instead of admiring a man for what he's doing right, they rag on him for what he's not doing. And that just completely devalues a guy and makes him unmotivated to want to protect and provide. And then the more he pulls away and doesn't protect and provide, the more she rags. And this is a tremendous vicious cycle, you know? Absolutely. And they'll try to compete with a man. Oh, yeah. As, as far as how to provide. You know, and that's a, that's a turnoff for a man because a man don't see that, you know, if he does something nice for you, and then you turn around and take him away for the weekend, you know, he feels, wow, that's great, that's amazing, but also simultaneously in his mind he's thinking, okay, what can I do now to outperform this? We don't see it all yeah. as contribution, but in- competition. Instead of emotionally providing him the acknowledgement, because a man needs to be acknowledged and recognized for what he does to protect and provide for you. And if you just give him the acknowledgement as you're saying, that's all he needs. <laughs> Absolutely. There's two two phrases that really strike to us as men, and even if we know you're doing it because you know that we love it, it still works on us. Little the phrases that, that can help us. So one of those, my wife does these all the time, and it, and it works, you know, regardless, is um, the phrase, if you ask him to do something for you, and then he does it, and you say, in a joking way, but cute, you say, you saved me, and give him a big hug. <laughs> my, my hero. <laughs> my hero, exactly. Like, I love it. That's, that's yeah. one phrase. And the other one is if he comes up with an idea. See, men are hardwired also that. Uh, that this one, worth, I know where you, it's yeah, his their, idea. Their, their worth is connected to the decision making. Because if yeah. you think about it, back in the day, if we went west or we went east to catch the food, if, you know, the, the wrong choice either meant we didn't catch the food or one of our, uh, one of the people in our tribe might be dead on the way out on this hunt and coming back. So, our decision making was vital to our survival. So it's still hardwired today, our decision making, celebrating the decisions we make as a man. So if we come up with a good idea, great thing that you can say is, that is brilliant. Brilliant. My hero. You know, and the thing is, men have to learn that even they don't make unilateral decisions because, yes, you're hardwired to protect and provide and make all the decisions. But men have to learn when they're in a, in a relationship that they get to talk about what they think they're going to do or what decisions they'd like to make. This way they're being <laughs> relational, true. right? And they're bringing the woman into it. And then the woman gets to say, well, wow, that's a really great idea. And you praise him for his really, you know, good thinking. But you don't make unilateral decisions. Decisions. Mm-hmm, absolutely. That's a biggie. That's a biggie. A big one in, in long term. Yeah, in definitely a committed big. relationships. A biggie. It's, 
you know, and the other, this is so funny, Matt, because, you know, I'm like, I'm, I'm a brainy woman. I have a doctorate, you know, so I have more education than most men. So after my husband died of a bee sting, after a few years, everybody said, you got to go on the internet. You got to date. So my mother starts leaning on me. You have to hide your intelligence. You have to hide your power. You, have to hide your you, know, so you just have to sit there and ask questions. I'm thinking, are you joking me? And when do you reveal your personality? When? On your deathbed? On the, the day right. of the wedding, you know, that's ridiculous. You know, it is completely that- ridiculous. And here's the thing men who are activated, men who are successful, men who are smart, we're not intimidated by a smart woman. That's who we're looking for. Right. We're looking for a woman who has a PhD, who has a master's degree, who can go deep with us. So, you know, and that's the thing everybody wants it all. You know, everybody wants the, the I call it the TFP, the total female package. You know, and but oftentimes, and and so this is really about, and like you're saying, you know, as women, there are things you can say to a man that will help ignite him and his attraction and his feeling of worth around you. See, when a man feels like a man in in your presence, that's one of the greatest attraction triggers there there is. Absolutely. And at, at the same time, a man, there are things he can do to really be the best version of himself, like you're saying, sharing in his decision-making process, building opportunities for enhanced connection. And when a woman feels like a woman in his presence, you know, then then that's the highest version that he can be. So it's, it's not just one street, like you're saying. It's definitely on both sides. Yeah, it's too bad you're married because you're my kind of man. Although you are probably a little too young for me, but you are the total... TMP, the total male package. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. So tell me, tell me what you see is the number one factor that causes men to pull away. So the number one factor, and I have a background in science. I'm a biology teacher in my former trade, and so I love how science gets, how our our biology gets expressed into relationships. And men have this natural biochemical ebb and flow to our wanting to pull into a relationship, wanting to connect, and then wanting to get space. And it comes from uh, wiring from when we would go out and hunt, we would come home, we would be with our woman, we would connect, we would snuggle, and then we would have this urge based on our biochemistry for the next morning to go back out in the cold, harsh, dangerous wilderness. And it has to do with our dopamine levels. When we're in connection mode, when our oxytocin is super high in connection mode, our dopamine, which is one of our feel-good chemicals that, that control our motivation, our desire, and our ambition, goes, goes low. It, it drops. And so as we come back and we're snuggling and we're connecting, all of a sudden our dopamine levels drop, and then we have this urge to pull away, an urge to get away from the thing that is causing our dopamine to drop and to go out and do something that causes our dopamine to go back up. Dangerous activities cause dopamine to rise. Competitive activities cause dopamine to rise. Building something, accomplishing something causes our dopamine to rise. And so as we're snuggling and as we're connecting over a period of time, then all of a sudden we'll have this urge to say, I need to go get some bromance time. I need to go to the gym. I need to go hang with the boys. I need to go to my workshop and go build something. I need to go. And oftentimes women's biochemistry responds differently than this. And so it's a point of confusion and a point of disconnect. Is it an oftentimes in my, in my coaching programs and I'll have women say, well, I don't understand why he's pulling away. And so they'll chase him. Never uh-huh. let him fully. I was the rubber band effect. You know, if he tries to pull away, if you are, and this isn't, and let me clarify, it's not pulling away for weeks at a time here with, with right. violence. That, that is not okay. He needs to communicate no. to you what, where he's going and what, when he's coming back. But he has to say, to, baby, I gotta go elevate my dopamine levels. I got, and we call it, I gotta get my dopamine time on. And what right. I love about that, it's a language that my guy friends and, and coaching clients, they can, they can understand that. And they say, I gotta go get some dopamine time. He goes and golfs and comes back and now he's fully ready for deep levels of connection. But if he never gets that time and it's very healthy and oftentimes men don't understand this, they don't know what's going on. All they know is they've got to pull away. And so that's right. They'll communicate it in the wrong ways and oftentimes women will get their feelings hurt saying, right at your height, right at a woman's height of connection, that's when he's wanting to pull away. And it's like, what? Talk 
talking you know, about it's it. It's so correct because what, one of the things that my husband did that was so intuitively wonderful and if men would understand this, you know, it's not about that you have to be there and be attached at the hip like a Siamese twin. It's about when you take your space, doing it in a way that is reminding the woman that you are not abandoning her. I am your provider and your protector, and I am loving you. I just need to come up for some air. And if you do it in a loving way, a woman is so comfortable with you taking the space, you can go to the moon. She won't care because you're holding her in your heart before you're separating. And I remember my husband, he used to, when he would be going off to work, sometimes he'd pick up the phone, he'd be crossing the Mid-Hudson Bridge, and he would say to me, well, the crossing isn't the same without you. You know, so even though he was leaving me and going in the opposite direction, he was reminding me of the connection. This was a a really uh, wonderful thing. And men, men often get confused about they're, they're socialized to do things. Either I'm here or I'm gone or I'm working out or I'm with you. And they forget that you can convey a feeling of connection in words and still take the space to re refuel your dopamine levels. Right? That's been one of my biggest lessons being married. I call these needle mover moments with my yep. life. and I'm I'm learning trial and error, you know, also with um and coaching from these uh, marriage masters, men say, hey, needle mover moments, that, that moment that your husband just did, he's away from you. You're not yep. expecting to hear from him, but he sends you, you know, he calls you and leaves you that message. Or he's someplace where he can send you a text. Fellas, when, one of the highest values that women have is that feeling of connectedness to you. And a needle mm-hmm. mover moment is when, if you know she's not expecting to hear from you, and you send her a point of connection, a phone call or a text that says you're thinking about her, you get amplified points compared to if she's expecting to hear from you because this came from you. It was self-generated. So those needle mover moments have been, I'm learning to do those more and more in my marriage saying, hey, you know, when does she not expect to hear from me? And that's the moment I'm going to seize to take that opportunity. And ladies, when you celebrate us for that, it reinforces that kind of behavior. Oh yeah, oh yeah. When you women need to learn that that when you want a certain behavior and a behavior comes forth that you like, reward it. Don't be ragging on somebody for what he's not doing. Reward him for what he is doing, and that's human nature. We do more of the behaviors that we get rewarded for. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so you're really moving the needle. And plus, you know, guys, it does get you more BJs. I don't know if they're going to bleep me on that, but. (laughs) (laughs) It's true. Yeah, ladies, those kind of rewards, when we talk amplified points, go a long way. Yeah. So your wife is really happy with you, and, you know, you're working it. You're not just going out of – honeymoon phase and becoming lazy and could you get out of the way and um, where's the remote you are working the relationship because people forget that relationships are like a car you maintain the car if you don't want the car to go off the road you change the oil so you have to keep on renewing the love and making efforts to remind your partner why he or she is first in your mind and heart why you appreciate him and her. You, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with that five to one ratio, Matt, right? Absolutely. It's you know, you got to have five positives every day to every one negative communication or interaction. And if you go below five, you even drop to four, you're not going to make it five years with your partner. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You and know? Cr- criticism is the cancer of Killer. relationships. Right. And it, yeah, it's, it is a killer. And, and so learning ways to have those positive interactions, you know, what are, what are demonstrations of those positive actions? Because oftentimes if we haven't been modeled that, it can be awkward. It can be difficult. You know, well, how do I, you know, how do I compliment him without sounding inauthentic or without sounding cheesy or that I'm just doing it, you know? And, right. and so, you know, using the words, you know, hey, I really appreciated when. Absolutely. Is a great intro to that. Hey, I really appreciated it that you, you know, when you took out the garbage last night, I felt cared about. Thank you. And you know, I know, I know I have to take a break, but there's just one point here. A lot of women will say, well, he's supposed to do it. Why should I appreciate him for something he's supposed to do? But it's just human kindness. And we, we say thanks to a stranger who opened 
versa. Why wouldn't you acknowledge a spouse who you love or a partner who you love who's doing something for you that you appreciate, right? Let me take a brief break, and I'll be back with you in a moment on Ask Dr. Love Radio. Hello again, and welcome back to Ask Dr. Love Radio. I'm Dr. Jamie Turndor, talking about the three secrets to cracking the man code with best-selling author Matt Boggs. He wrote the book, The Project Everlasting, Two Bachelors Discover the Secrets of America's Greatest Marriages. So, Matt, before we took a break, we were talking about all the little secrets that you've uncovered through your research and listening to couples who have been married for 40 years and beyond. So what what was the first mistake that most women make in a new relationship that pushes men away? In a new relationship, it's coming from this place of masculine, really wanting to demonstrate your value by providing for yourself. So in the in a new relationship, the first mistake, and this is where uh, I had to, a, a big shift for me in my dating relationships was understanding what is masculine and what is feminine. And really coming to terms that both, this is not about gender, it's not about male or female, this is about the law of polarity, that masculine attracts feminine, feminine attracts masculine, and I have both in me. You have both in you. We all carry both sides, masculine and feminine. We're usually dominant in one, but understanding what kind of behavior is masculine, what kind of behavior is feminine, and how to build that attraction is key. So for women who, especially, I have a lot of clients who are smart, powerful, successful women that aren't attracting a man that that they believe is on their level, is their equal, is their life partner. And one of the sh- one of the things that we work on is okay. How do you, how can you show up still in your power? Because women will make the misinterpretation that well, if I'm feminine, that's weak, that's passive, that's being a doormat, you know. And that couldn't be further from the truth. Being feminine and being is one of the most powerful states that you can be in. It's just very different than being a CEO. The corporate mm-hmm. world, especially if we live and breathe in this corporate world, or if you're an entrepreneur or business owner, that space, by and large, is dominated by a masculine state of mind and being. It's all right. about competition, building, um, you know. And so learning what is feminine and, and shifting your beingness, learning how to master both, both states and utilizing mm-hmm. the one, one of them when you're in that zone, like masculine for business, or ma- mastering your feminine when you're in relationships is uh, absolutely key to building attraction and creating the kind of relationship that you want moving forward. And, you know, it's interesting because one of the best ways that a woman can use her masculine side is by being direct and communicating like a man what she wants and what she appreciates instead of you know some women play the worst part of the female gender role and it gets them into trouble with the whining the nagging the complaining the hoping that men will read their minds and guess and then being mad at them when they don't here is one aspect where you could turn the male side the the male part of the gender role to your advantage where you're actually telling him what you would like what would and then stepping back and being more feminine and giving him the space to respond to you because he loves you, he wants to please you. Absolutely, and that comes you know right in the beginning. Make no mistake. See, men love women who have standards. And yes. Men's behavior might communicate something else. You might think, well, they really want a woman who's going to sleep with them on the first date or, or what have you, but the truth is standards are sexy. Standards yep. mean that you hold value on yourself, that you're not just like every other woman, and your ability to communicate those standards and hold true to those standards is incredibly sexy to a man. Because guess what? Men get triggered by competition. If they know that they can make it further than any other guy has made it, that is attractive. Or if they're just going to be lumped in with, you know, that every, you kiss every single guy on the first date, or you don't really care who it is that you get, that, they are, that there's no feeling of being special in that zone. With my wife, right. I, tried, I, you know, I was trying to get a kiss on the first date, and she's like, I don't think so, fella. Are you kidding me? You kissed me on the first day. She's like, I don't even know you. And I'm like, well, nice. but, that, that, but, ah. she's like, look, maybe as things progress, then you can do that. But for now, we're just going to keep it here. 
I like it. I like it. And you know what? There's a biological explanation for this as well. And I know that you are, like you said, a scientist and a biologist by nature. And my work always has focused from the very beginning for three decades. All my books talk about the biological underpinnings of our relationships. So it makes sense that we connect. But what I talk about is the fact that we are hardwired to seek the most desirable and attractive mates. And so standards convey I can be picked and selective. I have lots of opportunities and lots of options, and you have to earn me. Those are the standards that say I am a great catch. And if you're too easy and if you don't respect yourself and you give it up without respecting yourself, then it says she's desperate, she's hungry, which does not trigger attraction. Absolutely. You're not a desirable trait, a partner. I, I, I love that. I love that. And, and so one of the biggest challenges is to feel that way. Even though, like many of many of my clients are, you know, um, over thirty or in their forties or even fifties, and and so their lifestyle is one in where they start with me. They're not meeting a lot of men, and so naturally their feeling tone is, I don't have a lot of options. All the good men are taken. There's not a lot of good men left, and so that that starts them off on the wrong foot from the get go, and so therefore they start to compromise their standards, they compromise what it is they want, what they're really looking. And it has nothing to do with the reality of there not being enough men out there and everything to do with their, the lifestyle they've built around themselves and, and not putting themselves in positions to win. So what would you say is a position to win, to, to be in the right position, to uh, find these men who are hiding under rocks? Well, the, the, the first and foremost step is you have, to, you have to get what I call social momentum. Mm-hmm. Social momentum. And oftentimes, so I'll, 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 I'll give you this in perspective. When guys are taught from their older brothers how to meet a woman that, uh, that you want to be with, they, what they tell them not to do is go to a place, stand in the corner, not talk to anyone until you finally see the person who could be the one, and then the first conversation you have is you go up to her and try to talk to her. And the reason why is there's no social momentum. There's no fluidity to the connection because you've been pent up. You've been saving all of this excitement for the one, right? He said said what, what creates a much more successful state of being is a state of relaxed engagement where you're talking to everybody. You're talking to people you, you would never date. You're talking to people who are slightly potential. You're talking to the people who intimidate you, the ones who don't. And you're in this fluid, you're in this flow and this fluidity. And most people will go through their daily lives without engaging in conversations or connections. There's so many opportunities to create this social momentum from the person at the gym, you know, the, who's checking you in, to the person at the grocery store who's checking you out with your groceries, to the person at work, to the per, you know, all of these things, just to say, hey, how are you doing today? And, and even a 15 to 20 second conversation with these people will build that social muscle and that social momentum. And then as you're going out, you're going to meet more and more people the number of people you meet and the number of new people you meet every month directly impacts your odds of meeting a life partner. It's a, li- it's a numbers game. It yeah. is a numbers game. you got to be out there. You know, and a lot of people will say, go out and purposely go to places where men uh, go, like hiking clubs, running clubs. I don't buy that. I, you need to do what you like to do. You know, you don't want to be artificial. You go to do things that are part of your lifestyle and your interests, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It was interesting. I was reading this book about why men marry some women and not others, and it was this huge socio uh, experiment about about why what men are looking for, who they're choosing. And they said in this book that women who have married friends are actually way more likely to meet the uh, life partner after 30 years old than those who don't have married friends and go out with their single friends. And I found that to be fascinating. What they talked about was your sphere of social influence and who you're connected to. And, and because women who have married friends, those guys – have their circle of friends, and they'll often have parties or social engagements where they'll all go, and then they'll introduce each other to each other. So your ability to expand your normal uh, social circles and increase that sphere of influence 
has a great is a great determinant of your ability to meet the guy that you're looking for or the woman that you're looking for is going out and making an engagement. So, um, and that's why I love what you're saying, Dr. Jamie, about not going and doing things that you wouldn't otherwise normally do. It doesn't mean you can't go out and, and, and engage in social activities of things you're interested in, but right. creating, you know, going out and creating these false excursions isn't really in alignment with your normal lifestyle and what it is. Be real. Be real. So, yeah. Matt, listen, I am so glad that we get a chance to get to know each other because our work dovetails very well because what I'm, I actually, uh, you're going to be my first affiliate. I've never done this on the Ask Dr. Love radio show, but I've actually signed up so that your product will be available for sale as an affiliate product on my site. Wonderful. And I love that. I think, Thank you. I think it's great. And also what I do I think will be very helpful for people because it's great when you attract the right person, but you obviously need to know how to resolve the inevitable conflicts that arise. So my books, you know, Till Death Do Us Part, which is actually going to be republished by Hay House in January under the title Kiss Your Fights Goodbye. So <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. And, you, you, you are such a blessing and so awesome, Dr. Jamie. Not only, I mean, your content is phenomenal, and I just want to take a moment and celebrate your style and your personality. And you are so funny. I absolutely love you. <laughs> I'm crazy. I'm crazy. Because bring... I think that's what you know. That's what relationships are supposed to be about. And and never forget that that love loves fun. You know, people Definitely. love fun. And as we as we imbue what it is that we do, it doesn't have to be so heavy and and no sluggish. That, no. And that's why I love that you bring. You're great at, I've, at I've... lightening this up. I'm glad that you feel that way. So I'm, I'm gonna, I am just so thrilled that you and I have formed a relationship. I want to have my listeners know how they can continue a relationship with you. So give me all the coordinates. You said that you put together a gift for my listeners. So tell me everything that I can do to support you. Well, I appreciate that. I, cr- I recorded uh, an entire webinar that takes these principles and these strategies even deeper so women can integrate them into their life. So we talk about two things that you can do immediately to magnetize love, um, how to identify the right time to find your significant other, um, two huge myths that act as uh, impediments to finding the one, and a, a lot of other stuff. So if you're interested in, in exploring this information and really integrating it into your life, I'm going to give you the website right now. It's free. It's a free webinar. There's no cost to this. So um, the, the URL is crackingthemancode.com forward slash free gift. So again, crackingthemancode.com forward slash free gift, and uh, you can sign up there and get instant access to this recorded webinar, um, and it's got a lot of great information that will support you in attracting the one. Okay, and is that the only thing that you want everyone listening to know, or is there anything else, websites, books, anything else, or that's just it? And if they uh, want to understand and read the book of our journey across my best friend and I with my grandma went 12,000 miles around the country <laughs> with and the book is called Project Everlasting it's a phenomenal journey and insight into America's greatest marriages and the best place to get that actually is on Amazon um, they've got the best deal so uh, Project Everlasting on Amazon is um, is a great resource as well Matt, I am so thrilled that I met you. I, I feel such a connection to you. It was like an instant love. So I want you to promise me that you will keep in touch with me. Uh, you got my word. I appreciate uh, okay. it. Okay. And, and listen, I'm going to dog you and I'm going to chase you and I'm going <laughs> to. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm just going to get you my number so you know how to reach me. Will, I'm sure we're going to be talking more, and I'd love to have you back on the show. You're a wonderful guest. You speak so beautifully, so eloquently, and I love your short little aphorisms. They really help help the listener remember the main points. You're, you're a wonderful, wonderful relationship coach. So thank you so much for being my guest, and I look forward to seeing you all na- next week on Ask Dr. Love Radio. 